The entrance of a home is often overlooked. It's usually the spot that gets you from the front door to the couch. Now, in my opinion, that is doing it a disservice because it's the first thing you see when you walk in the door, so you want it to have that wow factor. And what's more wow than a sideboard, a timber feature wall, and you know what, I'll even add a mirror so you can make sure you're looking the goods when you walk in and out the door. And I'll start with the sideboard. I've decided to make a floating cabinet using this beautiful Tassie oak timber, but I need it to be wider. So the first thing I'm going to do is laminate these two together. Now, I could use dowels to do that, but I want to keep it nice and simple so everyone can do it. So instead, I'll be using these 100mm screws. When you are laminating two bits of timber together, it's always a good idea to check which edge works best. You can see if I went this way, we end up with a big gap, but going this way, it's nice and tight. So that's the edge I'll be working with. I'm using 100mm screws to laminate this together, but the problem there is it doesn't grab into the second piece of timber enough. So to solve that, I've just got a bigger drill bit with a stopper end. I'll drill in, and that way it gives me the grab I need into the second piece so we'll have a nice, strong joint. With the holes drilled to laminate it together, I've just ran PVA glue down the joint. And the trick here is, when you're screwing it off, you just want to use the clamp where you're screwing and work your way along. That way it makes it easier to make sure that the boards are flush. With the timber laminated, I'm now sanding it with some 120 grit sandpaper. I'm ready to start assembling this cabinet. And for that, I'm using this pocket hole jig. But if you don't have one, you can simply just go around and nail this cabinet together. You just have a few more holes you need to patch. But I'm going for that hidden fixing look, and I want it to be a strong joint. And that's where this comes into its own. I've set the depth, so now I can basically sit my timber in place and start pre-drilling my holes. <laughs> For the door fronts, I'm using some more Tassie oak timber, but usually they would sit on the outside of the cabinet. Instead, I'm going to be putting this one inside so everything finishes flush. And to attach them, I'll just be using some kitchen hinges. With the holes drilled for the hinges, before I attach it, I'm just going to make a check out at the top, and that's going to be where I'll put a little pull handle. This is going to look great. Now, this is a brick wall, so I'll be using some masonry anchors to hold it in place. If you did have a stud wall, you'll just need to find those studs and fix it off. <laughs> to finish it off, I'll put the door fronts back on and then add these beautiful leather handles. I made this awesome floating sideboard to add a little bit of style to this bland entrance. But I'm not done yet. I've still got a feature wall to go and I'm adding a mirror. So let's get started on the feature wall. I'm starting off with this 12mm MDF sheet. That's going to act as our backing board. And the first thing I need to do is seal it with some undercoat. The undercoat dry. I'm now going over the backing board with the charcoal paint, and this is going to be a great backdrop to work off. Mm. 
while the paint dries, I'll get on to cutting up these Tassie oak battens, which will then get mounted to our backing board. And I was looking for light at the bottom. Maybe summer be nice, but you were autumn. Give me ice cold as ice, I couldn't help it. You let me begging for love. With the Tassie Oak battens cut, I just gave them a quick sand to take off the sharp edges, and now I'm finishing them off with some Danish oil. That looks absolutely stunning. I'm starting off with this corner bit. You'll see that I've added a bit of 12 mil Tassie Oak. That way, when I sit it in place, it hides the edge of our backing board. Now, I'm using this little gun to nail it in. It takes these little 23 gauge nails, and they don't have a head on them. Compared to a normal fixing nail, which obviously have this big head, kind of like myself. I'll be putting three nails in each piece, one at the top, one at the bottom, and one in the middle, then using these seven mil spaces in between. The idea with this project is we don't want to see any fixings. That's why we're using these little nails, and it's no different to the backing board. So what I'm going to do with this next batten is actually not fix it in place. I'll put the spaces in and skip to the second batten on. That way, I can take this out, and you'll see that there's two holes here. That will allow me to mount it in place, and then we'll add this batten back in at the end. Look at that. Looks absolutely beautiful. Now, I just have to mount it on the wall. With the backing board in place, I can now add the two timber battens, which will give us that seamless look of no fixings. I'll be making two of these panels so I can mount them above and below the sideboard to create a seamless look. With the battens on the wall, we're now ready for the final piece of this project, and that is a floating mirror. And it all starts with this 17mm ply. The first thing I need to do is cut a circle. The simple way, you would have seen it before, finding the centre of this board, getting an off-cut of timber, and then tracing around and using a jigsaw to cut it out. But I've got a router, and I'm doing the same system with this. So I'll sit this in place, I'll put my nail in the centre, and then go around in a circle. And the trick here is if you are using a router, you want to make sure that you go around two or three times, dropping the depth each time. That way you won't put too much pressure on the router bit. Look at that. An absolute perfect circle. Now, I'll just go around the edges, give it a good sand and an undercoat. Every day's a vacation. Yeah, I know you won't hate. Don't make it a situation. Yeah, we up in this game. Come on. But no, no, we ain't playing. Every day we get playing. To add some class to this mirror, we're going to be illuminating it. So I've got this strip lighting, which just has some double-sided tape on the back, and I'll be sticking it around the edge of this backing board. Let me see you go, 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 go. Everybody on the north side, let me see you go. Go, go, go. Everybody on the west side, let me see you go. To stick the go, mirror onto the backing board, you just want to make sure that you get a glass and mirror adhesive. And you can see that I've cut the circle smaller than the mirror, so the strip lighting will be hidden. Oh, hello, young chap. Very good looking there, aren't you, sir? Well, thank you, thank you. You look very fresh. <laughs> I like looking down on myself. It actually hides these grey hairs. I look younger. And I think this mirror will finish this area off perfectly. I'm just using a split batten to hold it in place. You just need to make sure that your screws are long enough to go all the way through to the backing board, because I only used a pin gun to hold these battens in place. Lovely. 
Now, this may seem like a lot of carpentry work, but think about it as three separate projects, the sideboard, the timber feature wall, and the mirror. You can choose to do one or all three. The best part about it is, every time you come home, it's a great first impression. And then, when you go out for the day, well, you're greeted with this beautiful piece of custom hardwood furniture.